well, I love the the show, guys. I think it's just brilliant. I've been laughing watching oh, it all morning. Um, I'm going to start with you, uh, Megan. I, I was reading this came about when Ubisoft sort of said we we'd make a funny show. I just wondered if, as a writer, you've had that sort of pitch before, and I'm assuming when you do, if or if you have, it doesn't always materialize materialize quite like this. Well, yeah, everyone thinks that their workplace is the funniest place. And I've, I've heard that so many times throughout my career, people being like, oh, you got to do a show about the place that I work. It's absolutely crazy. And then you'll say to them, oh, yeah, what's crazy about it? And they'll be like, well, there's this guy, Bob, and he's just you just have to know him. He's just this really funny guy. And I'm like, yeah, well, the problem is. I can't introduce the entire uh, viewing public to everybody that you work with. So there kind of has to be a funny premise already at play with the workplace. And I think what we uh, we um, found so enjoyable about the video game workspace is that it brings together all of these insanely creative people who have big egos and big passions about what they're making. And it forces them to work together, sometimes against their will, to make one product, um, to collaborate on this thing. and. And um, then they show that product to everyone in the entire world. So the stakes are really high for what they're making. And anytime you have big egos and big stakes, you're going to have some fun and dramatic and everything in between a lot of conflict. So uh, when we when we started exploring what happens in the process of making these video games, we thought there's definitely a show here. Uh, Murray, mm -hmm. of course, in this uh, second season, you're working um, m remotely for the for the most part. Um, well, but, but I just wondered about your your sort of initial thoughts when that was sort of first proposed. It sounded like you might have needed some convincing to work remotely, but how was? Oh, we don't. Oh, yeah. Well, I meant, I meant convincing to work remotely, not convincing to get on board again. I think the character. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, I, I, I did it. I mean, I, I took their instructions and they, they led me through the electronics. But I really prefer. Uh, honestly, face -to -face we had to convince acting. Murray not to come in person. He wanted to be there yeah. in person so bad. That was what took convincing. Was stay at home for a while until we get these protocols in yeah. place, and then we'll bring you out. They were they were they were concerned for my safety, uh, flying around at my age and so on. I hated that, but you know you do what you do. <laughs> but uh, in the middle of the season, they they brought me out finally, and uh, it was just so much fun to be together again. I think that comes through the the camera, doesn't it? Come through on the screen. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a wonderful character, and I, yeah, I can totally see why you'd want to do more. And you must be so excited, Murray, when you kind of take part in something and you really enjoy it, uh, to see what what they do with your character and where they kind of go. Because I guess often with with yeah. a history and film, often things are so kind of one off, aren't they? But I guess with something yeah. like this, those scripts must be so exciting. Well, this season particularly, what a change he goes through. It's thrilling to see it happen. And I'm pretty sure the writers are not, not sure themselves what's going to be happening. They're, they take from what you give them. That's what's exciting about this. By the way, we improvise on the set, too. I, I, I think that there's a real, uh, I was going to say humanity about this, but it comes out of the relationships between the people in this company. It's a very rare company. Yeah, Megan, it's a privilege. I was wondering about... Oh. So like satirizing a world like this, but always remaining quite affectionate. And if that's quite a, a difficult balance to get right. Yeah, well, I think we have a lot of empathy for people that put their whole hearts and soul into something. Um, so in a way, even if um, I don't know everything about making a video game, I can appreciate somebody who um, puts all of their heart and soul into an artistic product. Um, so I, so I think the connection is there. Um, also, you know, to make fun of an, of an industry that, uh, billions of people across the world have, uh, enjoyed seems a little silly. I mean, it, it, uh, the video game world dwarfs the entertainment industry. So it would be like, you don't pick a fight with your big brother, I guess is, is my point. Like, um, we, we are, we are, we understand our place within the universe against video games. And as a storyteller, I'm just hopeful that video games don't to completely take over uh, uh, video games and television because I know how much audiences love to interact with the stories um, and these video games are becoming so complex that it's almost like playing a movie. Um, so I am very referential to them. I hope they allow us to, to be around for, for a while. Uh, so that's where it comes from. <laughs>
Well, fingers crossed there'll be more series to come because I think what you guys do is it's a great job. <laughs> and it'd be nice to do an interview this in person next time. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Stefan. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.